Yep. Beautiful. There we go. Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, and I'm asked all the time what kind of a computer you need for 4K editing, and what specifically works well with Vegas Post software. Now, Magix has sent me an Intel Nook enthusiast kit designed for high-end production needs. And this is a perfect time to tackle all these questions while I do a case study and review of this computer. So I have a degree in video production and I've been making videos my whole life, but my career has actually been in IT and development over the past 10 years, which makes this topic especially fun for me. There's so much we can learn about matchmaking a computer for use with Vegas software. There's a lot to consider from form factor to what's inside. Since it's December, I decided to go for a Christmas morning unboxing with my fellow IT and YouTube creator friend, Steven. Hello, Star Lord. You're here to help me review. What do you think? Uh, I remember Nux being like a little box, like this big. Yeah. We would mount them behind the TVs at the school system we worked at. Yes, that and was like, like a special Lenovo Nux. Well, they, I mean, but yeah, but this then there's is even like, tinier Nux too. This is very heavy. Like not, not a little bit heavy. It's he like yeah, it's heavy it's like, right it's here. Yeah, it's like it's like a lead brick. It's, it's very. I'm impressed. Let's do. Revealing shot. It's got the Skull Trail logo. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Oh, it's... Okay, so I've seen this before, but this is this Stephen's is... first time pulling it out. See, like, let me get my fingerprints all over the yeah, matte right. black. It's not... It doesn't well, show it... fingerprints yeah. that bad at all. They were smart, and they did not use piano black all over it. Which like... is one of the first times oh. I've ever seen that not used. I think this is a well, aluminum on the frame, at least. Yeah, it's what got is that a front port. Is that a SD card reader? Yeah, it's got an SD card reader right in the front, which what, I'm excited what? about. Notice the kind of ports available, which are targeted towards video editors. There's USB 3, C, and AUX ports right in the front, as well as an SD card reader. The back has ample USB 3.1 ports, which are fast enough to edit from an SSD external hard drive. Though, there's one terabyte SSD inside the Nook already, which means you don't have immediate space issues. So, oh, that's a great ooh. idea. This is why it's heavy. I figured it out. Look at this brick. Now that is a brick. Light on. Let's see how many watts. 331 ooh. brick. That is a chunking beast. What that means is this isn't a laptop. Yep. It's an i7 with an ARC, look at it. and I know that's the case. So what's exciting about this one, it's got an ARC GPU, which is Intel's new GPU line. I've actually never used an ARC GPU. Have you used an ARC GPU? No, I've not used ARC yeah. GPU. Vegas software has the ability to work with NVIDIA, Intel, and AMD GPU offloading. I've seen nice work from Intel's integrated graphics lines, but let's see what this beast can unleash with Intel's new Arc GPUs inside the Nook. Star Lord. <laughs> He's picking out the camera box. This is actually, I'm really impressed. Me too. This compared to what I've experienced with previous Nooks, this is very impressive. And it's, it's pretty much a full blown computer just shrunk down in a solid box. It's, it's as heavy as a full blown computer. This is it. Here she is. First time turning it on. Let's see it. It runs silently. Ooh, so tiny. Ooh, I'll get some B-roll of this later, but you can see. Oh, it glows. Like, that, that's it's upside awesome. down. Yeah. So yeah, now I know it's upside Ooh, down. That, there's the Skull Trail there logo. There we go. Skull Canyon, Skull Trail. I forget what they call it. Skull Lake. I love the aesthetics. Like I'm not an aesthetics dude usually. Like my builds are usually very. How would you describe my computer builds? Utilitarian. Utilitarian. And yep. if you're already buying a pre-built, and especially if you have specific needs to have a smaller form factor, a great place, a great reason to have a smaller form factor, if you move offices a lot, um, or if you uh, want something like a console, so if you edit from your TV screen, which I used to do, um, this this would be a great kind of computer to do that, because it would it'd probably game, edit, stream video, just do everything you want it to do right from your TV. Yeah, well, we're going to put that to the test. Yeah. Put the mic right up to it. Well, yeah, don't pull it off the camera off, but... Like, the background noise of my air conditioning is much louder than this. So that's good to know. So the base speed's 2.3, which is to keep it cool and to use less electricity. But the boost clock is... Um, looks like it's probably 4.5. 
um, max ish. Yep. Let's see. Is this thing a space heater? Hmm. Not really. 670 points. 670. So it scores better than like an i9 and a laptop. So I feel like that's kind of what you're competing against. Because if you wanted like a laptop to go, you might get an i9 to edit with. For video editing, the most important thing is a CPU. In general, you don't want less than an i5 or a Ryzen 5. So this powerful i7 is well suited. It's a GPU. So the GPUs will be the big telling point because it's got 32 gigs of RAM. And I thought this might only have eight or 16. Uh, 16 is kind of the minimum optimal for 4K video editing. So this is yeah. 32 gigs in this little thing. The second most important feature for video editing is enough RAM. You can have a Windows running computer at four gigs of RAM that works great for running Windows. And at eight gigs of RAM, you have a fantastic gaming computer. It's the sweet spot for gaming. Linus Tech Tips always says you need 16 gigs of RAM. That's because you forget when you're rich how much that price point matters. But eight gigs is decent for gaming and stuff like that. But for video editing, I would say eight gigs is the minimum. You don't need to be doing 4K video editing with less than eight gigs of RAM. You'll notice a major improvement when you have 16 gigs of RAM on your computer. 16 gigs is the sweet spot for 4K video editing, so I would definitely get 16 gigs of RAM. But this nook comes with a beastly 32 gigs. So it's an A730M GPU, yeah. which I believe is on the low end of ARC. Now, a lot of people are surprised I don't rank a GPU higher in the importance list. GPUs are steadily becoming more important for video production. Vegas is one of the few video editing softwares that actually use a GPU for timeline rendering as well as final codec rendering. So if you don't know, Firmark is a way to test specifically GPU abilities by trying to render yeah. hair. It also and comes with a CPU burner too. For, Ooh. for testing at the same time. Yeah. So click GPU stress test and CPU burner. Test it at your own risk. Just go. There we go. 180 Ooh, FPS. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. That's that's a lot of fur on the fur mark. I've seen it one time I ran it. Remember we ran it on the school computers? Those are like GT 1030. It was like it, it was literally rough smooth like a donut. It and like, it was like barely running. Yeah. Yep. This has got some this has got some real computation power. I'm excited to see what it's gonna do when I open up Vegas and 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 render and see how fast it renders compared to my compared yeah. to my RX 480. Dude, yeah. back in the day, man, FPS, this was crawling. Rep 20. It is running at 4K with maximum yeah. everything. So, so 4K max everything we're running. Oh, it's jumped up to 29 sometimes. So it's almost a, a smooth frame rate for like the max settings of heaven. So I've actually been editing in this nook the entire time. I've already done a lot of benchmarks and tests on this thing, including a lot of uh, Vegas testing. And I can tell you so far, this is the smoothest experience I've had editing ever. So we've got a new project of Vegas open, testing the power of Vegas's GPU utilizing capabilities with this Intel Arc. And one thing I want to note with the Vegas Pro 21 update, it's done a few improvements. The OFX and RAP plugin now actually utilizes the GPU when you use it. So uh, you can notice butter smooth results if you have GPU editing enabled. Another notable improvement that comes with Vegas Pro 21's first update is the ability to render and playback HV1 codec. The HV1 codec is a very new codec that a lot of things cannot use, and the HV1 codec is now able to be used in Vegas. So you can see here, Magix AV1. We can render out, let's go ahead and render out 1920 by 1080p. The AV1 codec is a next generation codec, which has a very efficient compression uh, without a lot of quality loss. It's just the next step and you don't see it used in a lot of places, but Vegas can already use it. And you can see here, we can put it in the timeline and play it back as an AV1 codec.
Now, whenever you see the GPU, in our case, in Intel QSV, available in the render options, that means you can use the GPU to render instead of the CPU. Vegas Pro 21 update has a host of other features they've added on to. Vegas is constantly improving the software, and I'm excited to kind of stress test it with this CPU and GPU combo here in this nook. Before we show off how much effects we can really stack on each other to really kind of break it, let's just go ahead and show some normal editing. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this 4K footage. I think this is 1080p footage. Uh, slide them together. We can, it's all rendering perfectly. Let's go ahead and add a layer to something very common like uh, text generation. Grab that on here. Just boom, throw it on. It's all working perfectly. Uh, we'll do some color correcting really quick just to show kind of typical things you do. I'll control G. No, wait, sorry. Alt G. There we go. We've got our scopes up. Uh, we can do some color curves, try to get get that brightness flare in there without overdoing it too much. Uh, maybe offset it, make it look like a, a deeper purple. All right, and then Alt-G again. Now we're doing edits to that, 4K, real time. Look at that, you know, it's fading. Let's just add a transition. Uh, this is a fun transition. It looks like it needs some GPU work to do. Oh, look at that. That was actually kind of neat. <laughs> um, even though it says fashion, if we change that to food, it almost feel like it's a real ad. So the point of all this, I'm just trying to show you some general kind of normal editing you would do uh, and how smooth this computer, this Nook, is working with Vegas in its intended workflow design. So now let's try to break it. <laughs> so first, let's just try to do some compositing. So I've got a lot of colors here with this fruit, and this is fun with this light looping. I've got uh, a light that swings back and forth, and this is just stock footage I've got inside of Vegas's uh, Hub Explorer because um, you can grab whatever stock footage you need. And so what's great about this is that it's a light uh, and it's going to move light and that makes for great fun compositing. Composite modes can get a little taxing on a computer. So first, let's just take a quick look at like a hard light overlay and see how that affects it. So that lets the brick kind of see through. Okay, let's try a, let's go ahead and loop this right here. And you can see how quickly Vegas is just responding to all these changes. There's a dodge. Let's see, screen. Lightened. Lightened shows it off really well. How it kind of only really brings the brick in once it kind of lightens the brick up and the rest of the brick kind of fade off. But all of that's happening in real time. So we're gonna leave this looping and just uh, add some other uh, changes to it and see how this computer responds. So we're gonna go to the video effects. Ooh, that's a great thing we can do. All right, to further stress test it, let's go ahead and add, add this offset and wrap we were talking about to the events. And uh, let's create an animation for it where we start and in the middle, we up the count a whole lot. And then at the very end here, we drop it back to normal. And let's see what this looks like as a transition. All right, still playing back very, very smoothly. So let's go ahead and add some more tracks. Ooh, I already got a lot. Okay, so uh, let's grab this 4K video here, drag it on top, and let's, uh, Tiny Planet's a good, very visible. Ooh, that's always exciting to do something like a cityscape. There we go. Now, uh, let's make that see-through. That way we're rendering all this stuff at the same time. A little less see-through. There we go. And that is very interesting. I hope this video was helpful in understanding 4K video 
Vegas software and the kinds of hardware that pairs well for the job. Thanks to Magix and Vegas for sending me this PC. It certainly has outperformed my expectations and a great case study for 4K video editing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.